Towards the year 1400, an extraordinary book was made, the picture book of the life of St. John and the Apocalypse. The Apocalypse is one of the books in the Bible that has sparked artists' imagination the most. Its text was transcribed in this manuscript, illustrated to conjure up the eternal struggle between the forces of heaven and hell. Its images follow compositions created 150 years earlier. This is how medieval artists imagined the visions that St. John described in the biblical text. The evangelist had these visions whilst in exile on the Isle of Patmos. This manuscript also features scenes from St. John's life, which are inserted at the beginning and end of the book. The life of the Antichrist is the third source of inspiration for this manuscript. These tales are narrated and illustrated in a book now containing 47 parchment folios and 94 gilded miniatures, a picture book apocalypse. But what is a picture book apocalypse? In addition to the pictures, a picture book includes many, many inscriptions. Some of these are short, identifying the names of characters or the various mystical monsters that show up in Revelation. Some of these are actual narrative explanations of what is happening in the scenes, and some of them are actual interpretations of what is happening, what they mean. And these interpretations are based on the work of a monk by the name of Baron Gaudas. The manuscript is organized in two images per page, that is an upper register and a lower register, and they follow in a natural uh, narrative format. This is unusual compared to most earlier apocalypses, which represent the image at the top of the page and then down below are inscribed the passages from Berengaris as well as the Book of Revelation. This manuscript is also unusual in the sense that it includes the full text of the Book of Revelation itself. The visions of the Apocalypse, of course, are the visions of St. John, and St. John serves as a guide throughout this manuscript. He is not only shown within the various scenes of the Book of Revelation, but the manuscript also includes 13 scenes from his legendary life. But the interest of this manuscript lies not only in the content, but also in the style of its illustrations. The earlier archetypes, which are mostly produced out of England, use a heavy line drawing style with a thin kind of color wash in the images, whereas our manuscript uses a very saturated uh, color pigment to decorate with a lot of bright colors. It also uses a lot of gold highlights and, and decorative details. The backgrounds of our manuscript are really interesting. Uh, they alternate between a flat gold background, which is normally always paired in one of the two stacked miniatures with this really decorative, opulent style diapering. The diapering is created by little blocks of either color, alternating colors, um, sometimes gold, which create linear patterns sometimes, usually diagonals, um, but sometimes the diagonals intersect to create these geometric shapes, diamonds, squares, sort of like an argyle pattern. And inside each of the blocks of color, there's tiny white lines that create an additional layer of decoration. Interestingly, there are also some backgrounds that use these brightly colored gradients to create a sort of sky motif. So instead of an abstract flat background, we have this uh, dimensionality to it. We think they refer to skies because of the gold stars sort of speckled throughout. But they use bright colors like orange and yellow kind of blending together. And there's only a couple instances of the use of these gradients, and we think that they even refer to um, possible additional artists who mastered this technique. So we believe the British Library Additional 38121 Apocalypse was produced around the year 1400 in the southern Netherlands, probably between Antwerp and Liège. And we've associated it kind of broadly with the Burgundian court, 
uh, which in the late 14th century was moved to the north when uh, Duke Philip the Bold inherited territories up there. So he moved the Valois court from France to the Netherlands. And we think that this is specifically the kind of context in which our manuscript was produced, most likely for some sort of aristocratic patron belonging to this court, or at least under the influence of it. And we think this because of the style, the heavy painting and the saturated colors and the very opulent use of gold all throughout the book really contributes to the material wealth of the object. And we know that the Burgundians were uh, famous book collectors who were very interested in ostentatious wealth like this type of a manuscript. This conclusion is also suggested by the coat of arms embossed on the spine of the binding. The study, conducted by Peter Kidd for Moleiro Editor's Edition, identifies the coat of arms and also deciphers an inscription barely visible on the first page, thereby revealing the provenance of the book. Tongolo Abbey, to the southeast of Antwerp. The Abbey's catalogues confirm that the manuscript was housed there from at least 1543. To enable readers to enjoy the details of this facsimile edition, M. Moledo editor handcrafted the entire binding in genuine leather. The same painstaking care was taken when reproducing the images using vegetable parchment specially primed to ensure their clarity, precise colors, and the gleam of their gilded details. In our search for perfection, we have produced a unique and unrepeatable work, available in a limited edition of 987 copies, certified by Notary Public. The comprehensive companion volume contains studies by Richard Emerson, Britt Bowler Hunter, and Peter Kidd that explain all the history, content and aesthetic values of this illuminated manuscript.